Hey everybody, it's Dina Rico with the Creativity Cave and I have a really cool project to share with you today that I'm hoping you're gonna love. There's some really great tips and tricks included for you in this one and we are going to be using the Very Best Occasions Bundle. Now this is a bundle you might have overlooked in our mini catalog, but this punch is kind of the coolest punch we've really had in a while. So I wanna show you how the punch works as well as a really cool technique that we're gonna do with it. So to start with, there's three punches in one. Um, the first punch is a tag punch. Actually, there's two parts are tags. So it just cuts that tag angle, which is really handy. The next part is a kind of a fancy tag. So we have a plain tag and a fancy tag. So for that, you're gonna punch like this. Okay, and then you get this cool edge. You're gonna do the other side by flipping your cardstock over and putting it in the same spot. And then it's a mirror image. If you don't flip it over each side, let me show you what happens. I, I'll show you how I learned this, by the way. Okay, so then if I just like put it in like this, then you can see the designs don't match up. So it's the inward curve and the outer curve. So if you just flip it over, then you will get a matching tag. And then the other portion of this tag cuts a little hole. Now there's a little line marked on that. So you just feed your paper, kind of line it up in the center and punch and then you've got the hole for your tag, so you can feed ribbon through. And I love that it's this kind of a hole because most of our ribbon is gonna fit nicely with that type of a hole. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on our project. Now I'm going to start with a piece of designer series paper. This is from the Abigail Rose DSP. I was actually working on this on a project yesterday. You might have seen it on my blog. If not, I will link it um, in this video for you. But, um, cause it was a really cool card, <laughs> but I'm going to take this and I want to make a tag out of it. So I'm going to just do the simple tag cause the DSP has kind of a lot happening on it. So we don't need the fancy edge, but look at how easy it was to make this tag. So that makes me happy. All right. Next, I'm going to take some of our masking paper. This is in our annual catalog and this is really cool stuff. I'm going to cut it. Um, it's It comes in five, I think five by seven sheets. So I'm going to cut, um, oh, an inch, actually maybe three quarters of an inch for a strip. And then like a, a wider, whoops, a wider hunk. It, the measurements really aren't critical. I just need two strips. Um, the wider hunk is because we're going to do some masking with our masking paper. Now this paper has a little slit in the back so you can get the backing off nice and easy. Um, but what I'm going to do is actually stick it to my clothes a couple times to get a little bit of lint on it. Now you don't have to do this, but I want to make sure that I'm not going to... <laughs> um, I don't want to rip my paper. And this is a pretty low tack paper, but I just want to get rid of some of that stickiness so that it comes off of my paper just as easily as it goes down on my paper. Okay, so I think we're good. Got all my dog hair. No, I'm kidding, a little. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put this on the edge here. And you wanna make sure it's pretty straight. You don't want a crooked piece because that would be kind of a big bummer. And then uh, I'm going to put it over. I'm going to leave, oh, maybe an inch and a half is about what's here. Okay, so I'm leaving, I'm leaving this strip on my tag. The rest is masked off. Now I do have this little bit right here, but I'm not worried about that when I do my masking. Now I'm going to use a uh, some kind of neutral colors, I guess. They're very 
earthy neutral colors, which is definitely not my normal color wheelhouse. You know, I'm a bright, fun, happy girl, but sometimes these muted colors can be really nice. And I think they're really great for our upcoming fall season. Uh, so I've got Cajun Craze, Calypso Coral, Pale Papaya, Soft Succulent, and Evening Evergreen. Now we're going to do some masking with, or some blending with these colors in our masked off area. So I've got some blending brushes that I can use with these five colors. And we're going to start with our lightest color. I always like starting with my lightest color because I think it um, <laughs> it's the least likely to ruin my ink pad situation, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So I've got all my ink pads open. I'm gonna start with that pale papaya and it is the middle color. So I'm gonna put it in the middle section of my tag here. And I can actually do a little bit more with this color than any of the other colors because we'll blend over them and that way they won't get swallowed up by the other colors. So there we have our first color. Then I'm gonna to switch to a different brush and I'm gonna do my Calypso Coral. And we're gonna go over the Calypso Coral area just a little bit like that. And doesn't that look pretty? These two are generally happy colors that I use pretty often, but this next one is definitely going to make it earthier looking. This is Cajun Craze, which is a great fall color. And I really love using this color in the fall too. Um, and you can see that's a little darker. And then I'm gonna go down here on the other end of my pale papaya. And I'm gonna use a little bit of soft succulent. And I can kind of blend over the two. They actually mix pretty nicely. So that looks really good. And then I'm gonna use that same brush and use my Evening Evergreen, which is nice and dark. So look at that beautiful color scheme. Now here comes the big reveal. This makes me so happy. I'm gonna pull that masking paper off. It's coming off nice and easy. And look at that. And then we've got our tag punch. So how awesome is that color? So I just love adding this little bit of color to a portion of this great big tag. So I think that's really cool. Okay, now I'm going to put this on a crumb cake card base that I've got right here. And um, I think the crumb cake is actually perfect for this so that the highlight is definitely the colors. Now we'll pop this up, I mean, obviously. Why wouldn't we? Because you know I love to pop up stuff on my cards. So we'll get some dimensionals on here. I'm putting up kind of more than I normally would because this is designer series paper. It's not as sturdy as, as like regular cardstock. And I want to make sure it stays up nicely onto my card. And then ba -ba -ba. we'll put that on there like so. Okay. And then I want to put a tag on here, another tag. A tag on top of my tag. So for that, I'm actually going to use a scrap of black. This is just, I cut a slice that's an inch and a quarter. So for this, we're going to heat emboss our sentiment from our very best occasion stamp set. And one of the things I love about this set is it's an innie and an outie, meaning there's something you can put on the outside of the card and then a coordinating sentiment to go on the inside of our card. So to do that, I'm going to take my little embossing buddy, drop that on here. I love this um, essentials toolkit, it is so handy. And then I'm gonna stamp my sentiment in some Versamark ink. And I've got um, kind of a nice little birthday sentiment to go on here. And um, our theme is garden party, which is cracking me up because all I can think of is um, if you watch The Office, they had a garden party. Andy had a garden party. And, um, and um, it was at Dwight's Beet Farm, Shroot Farms. And uh, Jim sold Dwight the single copy of How to Hold a Garden Party, and he made it like all these ridiculous things. So all I can uh, remember of that is when he was like 
announcing the guests as they arrived. <laughs> He's like shouting their names out. Oh, The Office is a good show. Okay, so now I've got this. I'm going to hold this with my tweezers so I don't burn my hand off. And we'll heat set this. I used white powder. And I think one of the best things in this world is uh, black cardstock and white embossing. It just is so striking and wonderful. Okay. Oh, hold on. My M is not quite set yet. There we go. Okay, now what I'm going to do with this is punch this with my punch, um, the opening. And so I want to, see, I'm trying to do this so you can see in the angle and I can do it correctly. I'm going to line this up right in the center with that mark and then punch the end. Okay, so now we've got our tag and we're going to put this on our card. But I, of course, wanted to add a little bit of ribbon. So now I thought this was kind of genius, if you ask me, of course. <laughs> um, I'm going to take some of my uh, soft succulent satin ribbon and then a little bit of my black baker's twine from the twi black baker's twine essentials pack. Ooh, this is a new roll. Fun for us. I always love opening new rolls of ribbon. Also, can I just give you a little tip? If you have trouble getting the the cover over the ribbon, squeeze the ribbon roll. So like I'm squeezing it with this hand and that kind of pushes it up closer to the edge. And then I can slip my snips under there and then uh, get that cellophane off the ribbon. You're welcome. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to feed this through. And here's where I love that this slit is kind of a rectangle because this is going to lay really nice. And this ribbon is gorgeous, but if I tied a knot um, with this, I think it would be really thick in my card and create a lump, which I didn't want, because um, the post office gets a little ticked off about that. But if I take and just tie it, and by the way, if you need more hands than you have to do this, what you can do is just set a block to hold it down Okay, and then I'm going to cut my twine and tie a little bow on here. Huh? 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 How do you like that? So I'll tie a knot real quick. I'm trying to hold this taut while I tie the knot. And now we are going to have a little bump, but it's not going to be as big as if it was from the ribbon. You could also do this with linen thread or, of course, other colors of um, Baker's Twine, but I thought the black would really um, kind of punch up the whole thing. Okay, so that looks great. Now our card, put this back here. We're going to add this to our card, and I thought we would just rip the edge off. Okay, I thought that kind of goes with, with the look we have of our card. Isn't that awesome? I love it. Okay. Now I will pop this up too. Sometimes I love um, when a card in your brain comes out as well as um, <laughs> in reality. You know what I mean? Okay. So once again, we'll put a bunch of our dimensionals on here. So our card stays nice. And I'll just have that kind of going off the edge right here so you can enjoy all the colors. Now for the inside... Um, I actually took and did a little uh, blending beforehand. And let me show you what I mean by that. Um, I wanted to make sure that this color combo was going to look good together. <laughs> you know, just testing it out. So I took a three quarter inch strip and I figured, okay, if it works, I can put it on the inside of my card. And if it doesn't work, then it's only a three quarter inch strip of my designer series paper that I'm wasting. So that is what I did. And now I can just put this on the inside of my card so that it all coordinates. And then I'm also going to add that any um, sentiment to the inside of my card too. I just need my, I need some seal adhesive to put this in. So we'll set that in like so. And then my sentiment can be stamped 
with some black, um, either Memento or Stays On. I just happened to grab my Stays On. So we'll stamp happy birthday on here. And there you go. Isn't that an awesome card? Now, I will show you one other thing. I was working, as I mentioned, a video I did yesterday. And I'll, I'll link that. This was actually my first test was with a color combo I did yesterday. So, you know, you can change up the colors and have a completely different look. This was a little thinner strip and then I realized I liked it wider. So that's why I chose to go a little wider. I think wider looks better. Um, you get to see a little more of the colors. But here's another color oppor opportunity <laughs> How about that um, for you to try this one out too. So I, I will have to put this into a card at some point. But anyway, I hope you loved my project. Project. And if you would like to purchase any of the supplies that I use, they are all linked in the description of this video, as well as on my blog post. I will also have a project sheet that you can download from this video to make this card with all the supplies um, listed. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you have a great day. Don't forget to give me the thumbs up and I will see you again soon. Bye friends.